be making basics. What's going on YouTube? Be making basics back again with another dope video. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe because we're coming back to back with bangers. Now today's video, I'm actually gonna be covering how and when and why to use buses when you're mixing your beats in Logic Pro 10, okay? Now let's talk about what buses are and what I mean by buses, okay? So um, first of all, let's look at this mix. If you look right here um, and look close in the output, certain buses are actually being distributed to auxiliary track. Okay, so I'm taking this signal right here, right? It's coming out of the output and instead of going out to stereo one and two, it's coming over here. The signal's coming out of these and going to this auxiliary track. Okay, now why would I wanna do that? So basically after I get the levels of the track, right? I just go ahead and level everything out, balance all the levels. What I'll do is I'll group certain instrument groups together. So it'll be like, you know, your drums, you know, your melody, you know, bass, and I'm grouping them together. And what that's going to allow me to do is actually control the overall level of that group. So like, for instance, my drums, I have those um, bust out to this auxiliary track and I can, I can turn this down. And what that helps me to do is work on the headroom, make sure that there's enough headroom in the mix. Okay. Um, without having to individually turn down each uh, track in order to do so. So let me just go ahead. I'm just going to let you hear some of this beat and you'll see what this would sound like if there was no uh, buses used and what it will sound like with buses. Okay. So I'm going to play a little bit of this beat and let's just go from there. You got it. All right, so now as you can see, we have enough headroom, negative 3.2. It's gonna give us enough tight headroom to master the track and everything like that. So if you go over here, you're gonna see, uh, again, there's, there's enough headroom here to master it. Um, so, you know, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that everything is bust out so that you can control everything. Um, if we look over here and turn this off, you're going to hear the difference. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the output and turn it back to stereo out. And you'll see that it's coming in a little bit hotter. You got it. And as you can see here, it leaves little to no headroom for when it's time to master this beat. Um, it does peak sometimes. So like as it came into measure 17, um, it peaked a little bit, as you can see here. So what I do to get around that is I go ahead and I bust certain groups or instrument groups to an auxiliary track. It's pretty simple to do that. Um, basically, you would just highlight the uh, instrument group that you want to bust to an auxiliary track. And under output, instead of stereo out, you'll just go to an available bus. All right. Now, I already have uh, buses created or whatever, so I'm not going to do it again. But pretty much you would go to an available bus. All right. And it's going to automatically create an auxiliary track. And you can come over here and name this a track. Um, we we'll name it whatever. Um, but obviously, I already have it created. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete anyway. All right. Delete that. And we'll put it on the right bus, the one I already created. So we'll go over here where it says bass. Then we're going to go over here and highlight this, send this to our drums um, auxiliary track, and then come over here and send this to melody. Okay, let's set this up just like this. 
now that gives me control over the different uh, instrument groups. And I can just basically make sure we have that headroom. You got it. All right, y'all, so basically just to recap here, what auxiliary tracks um, and buses are gonna do is allow you to um, bus a signal, all right, from a group of instruments and put them on an auxiliary track, which you can actually control the level of. Another thing I do want to, to um, point out is actually after you created that um, auxiliary track by busing a, a group to that auxiliary track, you can actually add plugins there and it actually will help with the, uh, you know, your processing power of your computer. So like for instance, on this melody track, if you look over here, I have this MV2 plugin on here. And what that is basically a compressor. So sometimes I'll put a basic compressor on some of these groups. Um, this depends, you can also just play around. Like I've actually put this uh, R bass on here. Um, it sounds decent, but then, you know, you just gotta like, a, B it, make sure that it's not like overwhelming or different things like that. But I got this uh, MV2 plugin on here and then I have the Smack Attack, which is basically just used as a clip, clipper, okay? Just to make sure that the, uh, that the overall volume is not clipping. So I just put that on this track. That's, that's something to keep in mind that you can do once you uh, bust your tracks over to an auxiliary track. Or whatever so that's pretty much going to be today's tutorial but i do want to leave you with this before we end the video um, we do have courses that you can purchase at my site beatmakingbasics.com so if you like the content you love the videos that you're getting here on youtube if you want a deeper dive go to beatmakingbasics.com download the courses um, the courses have hours of content and a lot of the information is exclusive content. So you're not going to be able to find it a whole lot of other places online. Best of all, you're not going to have to like create an account and all that type of stuff, you know, just to access your course every time. OK, sometimes when you purchase courses, you have to create an account. Uh, remember a password and all that type of stuff with beat making basics. Basically, you can actually download the course on your, on your computer. That allows you to now um, take the course at your own pace without restrictions. So that means if you're on a plane ride or, you know, an Uber trip or whatever it is, your best friend's house or whatever, you can actually pull up the course on your computer without an Internet connection after you download it. That's going to be huge. Um, make sure you also check out our sound kits drum kits and stuff like that those are all royally free um, meaning that you don't owe me anything if you make a beat with those sound kits or, or loop packs and um, post it online and sell it or whatever um, and then of course i also have my one-on-one -on -one service um, this is just basically for people who like to ask questions along the way all right you know yes you can watch these videos but you after you watch the videos you still have questions well book a one-on-one -on -one with me you'll be live you can ask me questions as I'm going, ask me anything about making beats in Logic Pro 10, and that's what those sessions are for. Just go to the site, beatmakingbasis.com, and uh, you know, check out one of our options to improve your beats and make better beats in 2023, man. So yeah, if anything else, just nothing else, make sure that you um, you know, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, smash that like button if you like the video or found anything useful. Um, and also check out some of the other videos we have on the, uh, on the channel. Literally have over 700 videos as, as uh, this video has been recorded. I mean, it's a lot of content for you to uh, consume and digest. Plus, like I said, we have the courses and a lot of other options for you. Um, anyway, appreciate you. I will see you in the next video. We're out.